Welcome back to another episode. Of, I don't know why I do this every time, but welcome to another episode of The Pupil's Life. It's like I'm welcoming you into my fucking sex dungeon or something. <laughs> uh, I'm still figuring out this fucking angle. And, and just what the fuck I should, you know, have in the background. It looks a little bit plain, but... Maybe I'm being too hard on myself. Who knows? <clears throat> um, what's up, man? It's fucking... It's the middle of July already. It's the middle of fucking July. And... And we don't... We don't have a foreseeable end to these... 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 <laughs> these uh, quarantines. Because that's what it is, man. It's quarantines. Now, it's not quarantine, it's fucking quarantines, uh, and that's not a, that's not a fucking joke on pedophilia, alright, I'm not talking about teenagers, I'm talking about multiple quarantines, um, yeah, dude, it's, it hits you in, like, in, it hits me in, like, little, little bursts here and there, just little moments where I feel fucking, like, holy shit, man. When am I ever gonna get to cook? <laughs> when am I ever gonna get to cook uh, for like for like a large gathering of people? You know, when am I ever gonna get to fucking go go sit down uh, at a at a large public gathering and and not have people think that I'm some kind of devil? Uh, because the thing is, like, I went to Zilker Park yesterday. You know, it's a big, beautiful park here in Austin. Big open space. They host a fucking 50,000 person music festival at this one park. Just to give you an idea of how big it is. And there's still a lot of space. Like, it's not like you're all fucking crowded in. I mean, there's obviously there are big crowds, but there's also a lot of open space. Um, and so I went there last, not last night, I went there yesterday. And... I, I just, we get there, normally there's not anywhere to park, right, on the weekends, normally there's nowhere to park, and there is just, like, dogs running everywhere, fucking, it's hard to find, like, a little spot where you can be secluded, because people like to spread out, and there's people playing football, there's people playing volleyball, there's people playing soccer, there's all kinds of activities, I went yesterday, dude. There's maybe 50 people, tops, at the whole in the whole park, and and you know it is there is something relaxing and peaceful and beautiful about that having the whole park to ourselves. But then there's also the, you know, part of the reason that I go to places like that is because I like to feel like the the community that I live in. I like to feel like I'm surrounded by that community. And so that's when it hit me just yesterday, just for a little, just for a little five to ten minute little spurt was just like, man, where, where is everyone? You know, where did everyone go? That's my question. Where did everyone go? Um, and where did everyone go, man? Even my fucking apartment complex. I've been walking through it. Not th I've been walking around it. Uh, these days and and as I was walking around it I saw one of the units with just fucking pitch black inside curtains were like kind of shredded and and I was just like so wait they're they're asking me they're they're asking to increase my rent but they've got an empty unit over there so they're they need to fill the space. Why are they trying to kick me out, dude? Um, you know, there's probably some fucking economic reason that I don't understand. But, uh, by the way, I do this a lot more now when I'm in public just to fucking piss people off. <laughs> I I do... the The sneezing is the thing that is... It's hard for me because I sneeze a lot, dude. Like, 
if you haven't already heard on the podcast or if you don't know me from when I was a young boy, a young buck, I would sneeze in class a lot, dude. In fact, I'm going to sneeze in like 15 seconds. Um, I would sneeze so much in class that my teachers would make me leave the classroom because they thought I was being like a distraction. They were like, just sneeze like a normal person. So now anytime that I'm in a public space with this whole pandemic, I fucking, you know, I like, I do that thing where you like hurt yourself so that other people won't think that you're one of the infected. Because if you hold in a sneeze, dude, that's hurting yourself. (laughs) That's fucking, that's painful, dude. Holding in a sneeze is not like trying to hold in a yawn. Right with a yawn, you're just like, like doing like De Niro's fucking. You know, you're like you talking to me. With a sneeze, it's just like, just fucking like. You know, you feel your tonsils like fucking punch each other, dude. It's just, you feel your body just like, 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 like reach out for for some kind of salvation dude and and it's blocked and so it's just fucking hitting the walls of your throat and then you also just you still end up doing the thing that looks like you're sneezing you're still like you know but you're just not making any noise as if people aren't gonna notice some fucking guy you know just sitting sitting on a picnic blanket just going (laughs) you know it's so it's so silly the things that I that I do the things that we do to uh, try to cover up our humanity like farts dude you know it's one of the stumbling blocks with me in relationships is just like farts dude because you know when I sleep by myself you can't see it but the bed is right behind where you're looking when I sleep by myself dude um. I, here, here it comes. <laughs> you know, it's very different to do that in a fucking public gathering than to just be like, uh, <laughs> when I sleep by myself, man, and I get the impulse, I just fucking lift up the blanket and fucking, you know, just, nobody's there, dude. It's not gross. It never smells anyway. So nobody cares. But when you're with someone else, maybe they're already asleep. And then you're going to wake them up with a fart, dude? Really? You know, you try to pass a quiet one, but then the smell's going to wake them up. And they're going to be like, (coughs) (coughs) (sighs) you know? And then they're going to be upset. Whereas if they just wake up with a, they're just like, they don't even know what they heard. I don't know, man. I don't even know what I'm talking about, but. I don't know. I think people people are trying to cover up their humanity too much. And uh, one of the ways is like not going outside, right? But I've been going outside, dude. At this point, dude, I'm just saying fuck it, you know. I've made a I've made my reconnaissance of information is if that's even the right word. Um uh, I'm almost certain that it's not, but I'm just going to go with it. I've made my reconnaissance of what I gather to be factual information. And I, uh, dude, if I'm going to, if I'm going to, if I'm going to get a, get a, get the flu, dude, I might as well do it outside while I'm fucking bathing in the sun, dude. Just fucking, you know, like, I don't even know if you can tell, dude, but like fucking, dude, I'm like. I'm like tan. I'm more brown than I've ever been in the U.S. And I used to be this color all of the time when I was in Mexico. Uh, So I'm trying to get back to my roots, you know, get back to that color. Um, Because I guess some people would say that I am a person. I don't know if it's a person of color, dude. What is it if you're Hispanic, dude? If you're half Hispanic, can you say that you're a person of color? Because, like, 
isn't it isn't saying i'm a person of color dude anyone dude i'm a white i'm white dude white's a color dude <laughs> i'm fucking i'm fucking half white half syrup dude i'm fucking uh, i'm a person of two colors dude i'm a person of colors um you know it's so it's it's so relieving when you stop paying attention to the shit that makes you afraid that's what i realized dude when i got back from illinois it's been a week and when i got back i realized like i'm choosing to be this way i'm not unhappy just because right there there are reasons why i'm unhappy and i'm choosing to be unhappy um and a lot of that was just like looking at fucking the news politics fucking who got canceled over blackface and yada fucking yada blah 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 blah. you know and at the end of the day dude like what does that even do to me you know what is being informed of that do to me okay well what it does is that it makes me paranoid number one and i i don't know if people count like this dude i don't know who does like one like that sounds like a fucking arrogant way to do it i do like one you know i'm showing weakness but i'm also showing that i'm humble because my pinky is fucking small dude the ways that 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 consuming all of that shit affects you is number one dude it makes you paranoid and scared number two it makes you see others as less than number three it takes the joy out of doing things because it makes you feel selfish for doing those things you know oh you're fucking you're privileged because you live in this part of town now i feel guilty for living in that part of town no, actually, you don't have to, right? But, like, now they're trying to make you feel negative emotions. And I don't know who they are. I just mean, like, not they as in people. I just mean, like, consuming that information is making you feel that way. Uh, or you are making yourself feel. I don't fucking know, dude. People say that you can't make yourself feel or that, or that you shouldn't say something else made you feel a certain way. But... <clears throat> I'm just trying to <laughs> What if all podcasts, dude, just like coordinated to have like a fucking mental breakdown at the same time. So you know, all the podcast episodes this Monday were just <laughs> some dude like breaking down, dude, cuz he's sick of the quarantines. Maybe I need some water, dude. Maybe I need some fucking H2O to connect to Earth. <sighs> Isn't that how we're breathing now after we drink water? Um, yeah, dude. My point is, when I stopped paying attention to the things that made me feel paranoid and scared... I stopped feeling paranoid and scared. You know, there are so many things happening in the world and so many ways that we could all leave the world, you know, like from one day to the next. And all of the all of the media, not all of it, but a lot of the media wants to make you think that you're responsible for those things. Oh, there's hotels, dude, throwing food away by the ton. You shouldn't waste food. You're responsible for it. Oh, dude, there's fucking animals going extinct. You're not vegan? You're part of the problem. Oh, dude, Black Lives Matter. You're not out there protesting, dude? You're part of the problem. Oh, dude, there's people fucking starving in in very low economic standing parts of the world 
Oh, you're throwing away food, dude. You're part of the problem. You know, there's all of these things that we are made to feel guilty for if we don't try to do something about them. And not even that, dude. The thing that's scary is it's not about whether or not we do something. Because if we do something, then we just fucking do it. It's about how how vocal are you being about said thing? Because people now think that that words are action. And the whole fucking lesson around child psychology, dude, and learning is that actions speak louder than words. No? Did I get that wrong, dude? Are we fucking rewriting the book? On psychology for some reason I don't know man I don't know I'm, uh, I'm not even <laughs> I'm not even paying attention to this shit I'm just uh, I'm just trying to help myself dude and I've been feeling a lot better this week than I have fucking like dude I've got this app right which if you don't have it already you should download it um, it's called what is it called, dude? It's called Dalio. D-A-Y-L-I-O. And it basically looks like this, dude, right? Like you fucking... You probably couldn't see shit. I don't even know why I tried to do that, but... You, um, you hit, like, add today's entry, and then it prompts you with, you know... What is what was your day today? What was your day like today? And so you can put it's it's trying to say how do you, how did you feel today? And you can have little little bubbles that you click every day so that it marks okay you read today you wrote today you went outside today, just to keep track of like it's like a mood tracker I guess. Um. And I've been doing it I think for almost two years now which is a little bit over 700 days. And I've noticed that in those 700 days, dude, at most, I've got maybe 30 great days, which is like the highest, right? If it's fucking, I guess where you're watching it, it's like, this is the scale. This is greatest. Like, this is great. And this is like terrible. And then there's like, sad or down meh which is the middle one just like a meh just like eh today was just meh <laughs> and then there's like good and great right it's five that you get to choose from and you can modify the words you can call it fucking uh diarrhea dude and then fucking rainbow um and so of those 700 days dude only th maybe 30 had been great, dude. And a lot of them had been good, but a lot of them had been meh or sad, dude. And a lot of them had been terrible, too. Um, and this week, dude, I, reg I registered fucking, I think, five great days in a row. I think I'm on, like, five great days in a row. And I know what that sounds like, right? You know? Nobody wants to listen to somebody else be like, dude, I'm fucking, dude, I'm fucking jazz, dude. Like, maybe they do. I don't know. Why do why do people say that? Like, nobody wants to listen to somebody just wallowing, right? But then we also say, like, nobody wants to hear about somebody that's doing great. It's like, then fucking, do we just not want to hear about anything, dude? My point is that... um what was my point, dude? Can you try and remind me? Um, you probably know what my point was because you're fucking listening and you've been paying attention more than I have, apparently. My point was, dude, that when I stopped paying to paying attention to all the things that were making me feel like I was not doing enough or like I was a bad person for what I was doing, even if it was a passive thing, like not doing anything... 
Not yeah. Not only, dude, is it making me not do anything? It's making me feel bad for not doing anything, not doing a thing. So like, what? Like, it, it, in retrospect, it makes a lot of sense, dude. And I'm sure that I'll fall back into this loop because I've come in and out of it, right? But uh, when you're looking at it in retrospect, it's like, oh, I wasn't doing anything productive. Like, I wasn't helping myself or anyone else. And I was feeling terrible about doing that. So I, when I stopped paying attention, dude, that's why all my days were fucking sad, meh, terrible. And now, dude, I've just been switching a little bit. I've been switching things around a little bit, paying less attention to that. And I've got five great days in the bag. And I think I'm going to get, you know, five or six great more days to come. Um, to come. Isn't that like some fucking character from Pocahontas or something? Um... I don't know, man. It's uh, it's just the thing that's changed the most. I think the thing that's helped me the most is, and I learned this from Noah Kagan, uh, which if you haven't checked out his YouTube channel, man, that is that is a very underrated YouTube channel. You know, it's got like sixty thousand subscribers. But the things that he's putting out, the videos that he puts out, I basically established a whole work routine this last week that made me have five great days because of Noah Kagan's YouTube channel. And that is not uh, oversimplifying it or uh, overstatement. It's just facts, man. He, he, he provides you with actionable information in a very feel-good manner you know he's not one of these guys that's like all right guys he fucking pulls out a whiteboard and he's like if you want to make two two million dollars by the end of the year and you want to get a lamborghini just like i did here are the five steps that you need to follow like it's not that kind of bullshit um which is it's bullshit right because even if you make $2 million and you get the fucking Lamborghini, you're still going to be miserable. What he's doing, dude, is like, I don't know, dude. He's just got this human human approach to it. But so the thing that he, one of the things in his videos that um, that's changed my routine the most is I put my fucking, my cell phone in the closet now before bed. And in the morning, it's it's in the closet still. So like an hour before bed, I'll plug my phone in. It's in the closet, charging. Good night, phone. And I'll start reading. Just, you know, I'm not going to fucking... Because I used to sit in bed, dude, trying to go to sleep. But I'd be like, dude, those uh, subterranean train tracks in New York... That's some fucking creepy shit, dude. I need to fucking... I need to watch some videos on that. Right? Like, that's gonna help me fall asleep, dude. It's gonna give me nightmares is what it's gonna do. Or it's gonna be so engaging that it activates my fucking... My my body or my... Raises my serotonin levels. I don't know, man. I'm not a scientist. Uh, <laughs> um, or I would be, you know... Let's see the latest notification on my phone, dude, or on a dating app, or fucking YouTube, or whatever. Stimulating myself. That's what I was doing. It's, it's all obvious, dude. You've heard this a million times before, but I put my phone in my fucking closet when I watch one of his videos. And then when I wake up, dude, I don't, I don't go to my phone until I've done at least three things that make me feel good. Um... And so that could be, you know, doing like 10 push-ups, dude. Could be. Could be doing 10 push-ups, dude. It could also be fucking journaling, dude. Which if you're a bro and you're like, oh, I'm not going to fucking journal, you fucking pussy. You know? Journal fucking your thoughts on the NFL draft, dude. I don't give a fuck. 
if it's not about your emotions. It doesn't have to be. Just because that's what I do doesn't mean it's what you have to do. So just journal. Um, just journal like, oh, dude, I'm fucking pumped to fucking, I'm fucking pumped to, to fucking, like, oh, dude, I want the Seahawks, bro. I'm fucking pumped, dude, because, 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 because uh, Manny doesn't know that the Seahawks are going to get uh, Richardson this season, dude. And so he's not going to pick him, dude. And I'm pumped that I, have <laughs> that I have that information. You know, just write that down, dude. And be fucking like, you know, like that'll fucking jazz you up. Write down your strategy, dude, for the NFL draft. And if you're a lady, dude, and and you just, you, you do want to write about your emotions, dude. You know, do that. You know, ask yourself. Or, you know, not just a lady, dude. But if you're a guy who doesn't fucking think that it's should be called being a pussy, dude. Because you're just talking about your emotions. Or a lady. Either one of those. Like, if you're just a regular human being, dude. Um, you know, just ask yourself, dude. What am I grateful for today? Oh, dude, I'm grateful that I fucking... That I don't have to leave my apartment. You know, so often in your day to day before the pandemic, you were probably upset at traffic, dude. I'm grateful that I don't have to be in traffic today. I'm grateful that I that it's a fucking beautiful, sunny day outside today. I am grateful that I have a bed that is comfortable. I have pillows that are comfortable. I have food that I can eat, dude. I'm not going to dude. imagine Imagine, dude, I'm hungry right now. As I'm doing this podcast, dude, I'm fucking hungry. Imagine if I didn't know where my fucking next meal was going to come from, dude. I would not be I would not be doing this podcast, man. Um I'm grateful that I have a phone that works. I'm grateful that I have electricity, dude. Like, it's it's simple things, right? But you start doing this and you're like, you're showing gratitude. So you're doing something that makes you feel good. It's just an action that makes you feel good. Um, so that's two things. Or, or that's one thing. You start, you journal, dude. It could be fucking push-ups. It could be fucking, I'm going to shave, dude. Some people like to shave and that makes them feel good. I fucking hate it, dude. So I put it off as long as I can. Some people like it, um, or uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for a three minute walk, dude. Just you know, go outside, dude. Pace. I'm just gonna pace for three minutes. <laughs> um, or I'm gonna fucking. I've heard this from women a lot. I'm gonna drink a full cup of water, which I wish that I could do. But I wake up in the morning and I'm just like parched, dude, and I'm still not like in the mood to drink water. Because then I'm going to have to pee 10 times in the next hour. And I've just got the bladder of a fucking mouse. So, you know. I opt out of that. Um, <clears throat> um, fucking, what else, man? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it, it's the thing, man. I, uh... I'm having like hot flashes, dude. It's how hungry I am. <laughs> um, um, yeah, man. So, so do some of that shit, dude. Instead of fucking, instead of fucking just like being upset all the time. What can you do to 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 be happy? Even if you don't, even if you're not fucking registering five great days in a row, like that's you don't have to start with that, dude. But just right now, dude, if you're listening to this, right now, dude, I'm fucking talking to you. If you're listening to this and you're upset right now or sad or whatever it is, what are you going to do about it? Do any of the things that I just said make you feel like you would feel just that little bit better? Or, or because you don't have to replace a negative emotion with a positive one. Do any of those things that I said make you... Th do you think that any of those things would help you feel 
how you're feeling a little bit better. Instead of just fucking, you know. Because that's important too, man. I've been reading a great, great fucking book called Letting Go by David R. Hawkins. Hawkins? I don't know. Hawkins? It's not Hawkins. It's Hawkins. Hawkins. Um, and it's all about that, dude. About like allowing what you're feeling to come into your... It's the same fucking thing you've heard before, right? Oh, I'm supposed to just fucking feel it and let it go, man? What does that look like? I had the same question, man. This book answers it. So if you're interested, Letting Go, David R. Hawkins. Um, but what it looks like for me, like like Friday, dude. I um, I published a story. And most, all of, all of the comments, except for one, were positive. You know, people that, it was a story about my, my something that I feel pain about. And everywhere, dude, people fucking sharing their pain with me, right? And and thank you for doing this. Thank you for sharing this. I hadn't thought about this. This makes me feel less alone. All of these things. Um, and then, but there was one comment that was an attack on on me for having done that thing. And my first thought dude because it's important my first thought was why am i paying attention to this one comment when there are so many other positive ones right and it's like that doesn't matter dude it doesn't matter why the facts are that i am so let me feel that instead and so i just fucking sat down dude and i just anytime that i was like all right, I'm done. I'm going to check my phone. I was like, no, dude, not yet, dude. Just fucking, just sit here, dude. Just fucking, whatever it is that you think like, oh, I'm going to watch a movie, right? I had plans to watch a movie that night as I was cooking. And so I was like, you know what? I'm just going to cook without watching the movie. I'm just going to cook without watching the movie so that I can be thinking about, or not thinking, feeling what the this this comment made me feel or what i felt about this fucking comment dude um and and it's like the next day i woke up and i still th- thought like oh dude remember that comment but then it, it didn't hold as much weight um and so it's just like doing can also be avoiding uh, so you want to watch out for that. I don't know, dude. Why am I fucking lecturing you? I'm not, dude. I'm just telling you what's worked for me. Because I do feel a lot better this week. And I know just just some of my friends, some of my friends' friends, I know that they don't feel so good. And so on the off chance that one of them is listening to this, dude, I didn't need to say dude then. Um... On the off chance that one of them is listening to this, I, um, you know, why not share something that's made me get back on track, you know? Because that's what it feels like, you know, you're getting back on track because you were off track. It doesn't mean that you were a terrible person. It's not that you're better or less than. It just means that, you know, if the track is going this way, and then fucking you just started diverting. You're still sort of going there, dude. But it's not until you fucking course correct and get back on track that, that you know, that's all that it is, dude. Uh, it's, it's not that. It's important to note when you get off track so that you can understand, you know, why is that so? And what can I do to, to, to course correct? Yeah. But, um... Speaking of TV shows, dude. Speaking of fucking TV shows. As I've been trying to consume less, like, commentary media. You know, like, podcasts are commentary. Um, 
mainly podcasts, dude. I've just, as I've been trying to consume less podcasts, I've been looking for like TV shows or just um, uh, fictional, you know, like a movie, dude. Fucking doesn't matter which one, dude. It could be a rom com. It could be whatever. I know that I know that a lot of movies are are commentary on things in our society, but they're not trying to tell you how to live, right? They're just telling you a story. So as I've been trying to do that, I stumbled upon this TV show called Alone. And man, if you don't know what Alone is, just type it into Netflix and watch the first episode. And you're going to be hooked. Like, I don't... I th- I think, dude... And it's weird that this show isn't more popular than it is... Um, I think, dude, that, like, it's impossible not to like this show because it's in your DNA to like the show. Like, literally, in your fucking genes is is one of those genes is, like, the show, you know? <laughs> um, dude, somebody should animate, like... You know how you see those little animations of, like, sperms dude like swimming to the to the ovary or whatever i know that i don't even i don't think that the that sperm is a gene i don't even like i'm sure that sperm contains genes dude but somebody should animate like a fucking or just like draw like a fucking uh one of those graphs right like inside of the vagina dude with the sperms like swimming and just have them like be wearing jeans, dude. <laughs> just some fucking like some of them could have like cut off jeans. Some of them can have jean shorts, dude. Just fucking like little sperms with two legs, dude. Just fucking like <laughs> fucking that would be I wish that I was a good animator. Or a good like artist. Like a I hate that the word artist has has taken on a new meaning. Because now it's like, I can't tell people that I'm an artist because I don't, I think of like, I don't, I don't make art like this kind of art. But people are like, oh, but you're an artist because you're a writer and writing is art. And it's, but, but why is it then, like, I think of art, I think of fucking this, dude. <laughs> and I do this. I don't do this. I do this. You know, this is tense, dude. This is fucking, you know, this is this is getting at, like, fucking, like, my muscles, dude. This is just fucking, like, releasing them. Um, but, yeah, I wish that I could, that I could draw, like, a little fucking gene pool. Um, you know, that could be, the, that could be the drawing. Just draw a little fucking above ground pool from a helicopter view. Um... And then just just a bunch of little semen jeans, <laughs> drying or swimming around the pool. I don't know. That's where my fucking brain goes sometimes, right? Um. But this show alone, dude, it's in our genes to to like it, right? Uh, because what it's about is ten people that are dropped in the fucking Arctic tundra. And they've got to survive longer than everybody else. Now, very important question that one of my friends asked me is, these people can't kill each other, can they? <laughs> no, no, this is not the Hunger Games. They are not dropped all together at the same time and then fucking, you know, bells are ringing with drops and shit. Like, it's not, it's not a fucking, it's not one of those shows. Um, though I'm sure that one of those shows would fucking blow up, dude. Like, imagine, dude, imagine if you could film a show where people sign a waiver, they sign their life away, nine out of ten people are signing their life away, (laughs) and, and then they have to hunt and fucking ravage each other until one of them is left, but they're in, like, a sprawling fucking huge location. Right, so it takes like 250 days for them to fucking 
get down to one person because they're setting up camps. They're not just going straight for each other. Imagine, dude. And then they're like, just fucking like a helicopter fucking drops a box, dude, with a parachute. And there's like a bow and arrow in it. Just a single bow and a single arrow. (laughs) That would be on the number one trending list on Netflix for the rest of time, dude. Um, But no, this show alone, they're not hunting each other. They're just trying to survive on their own. But they don't interact with each other, right? They're in different parts of the tundra. They build their camps. They hunt rabbits. They hunt squirrels. They hunt deer and moose and all this kind of shit. They've got a, they've, if they've got a body of water next to them, they can fish. Um, so it's basically... I don't know if you know this game called Don't Starve on uh, PS4 and PC. But it's basically like the real life version of that, you know? Uh, which is why I say that it's like the gene... It's in our gene pool. is because we all like the fucking... The Sims right like it can be so hard to live our lives sometimes that it's fun to pretend live somebody else's life and so it's cool to like oh dude i'm gonna build my own fucking little house because i can't afford one in real life but in the sims i'm rich (laughs) you know and in the sims i can be social and fucking go to go to a bar and be like and then some hot chick is like, <laughs> you know, and then all of a sudden you're at home, dude, and it's fucking blurred up and you're, you're having sex with some, some fucking animated cartoon, dude. And you're like, dude, fuck yeah, dude. I had sex today, dude. <laughs> and so watching this show is like, you learn a lot too. You learn a lot about, um, like nutrients and protein and all these kinds of things but then you also learn a lot about the mind like and there's seven seasons but there's one of the seasons there's one guy that's like you know i've got all the food that i could eat and i've got a perfect shelter i've got i've got everything really that i need to survive but um but i miss my kids so uh i'm doing this for you kids i'm tapping out i'm tapping out and he fucking phones it in dude And so you learn, like, all right, dude, not everyone has the mental fortitude. Um, Not everyone has that mental fortitude. Some people have everything that they need, and they're still not happy. Because what are they missing? Fucking connection, dude. That's why that fucking dude that's like, oh, the the $2 million for the Lamborghini, that's not going to make you happy, man. Um, But watching alone might. And it's so fun because you get to watch people fuck up. Like, like, obviously they can phone it in. They'll get picked up. Nobody's going to, like, actually um, die. Though they could eat something that's got ty- typhoid or, you know, one of those, like, serious diseases. I don't know exactly how they manage that on the show. They don't say. Like, some dude is sleeping in his tent and he's like, holy shit, I think I hear a bear outside and it's like dude that bear could come in there and fucking kill him right we all watched the revenant so they don't really and maybe this is part of the show like covering their own ass right maybe they've got like 15 people but they only pick 10 at the very end uh in case somebody dies they can just write it off as like a tax deduction Uh, (laughs) um but you get to watch people fuck up dude and you get to watch people like burn down their tents and shit like and they're like oh my god i've got a fire i've i've got a fire oh my god I can't, what do i do <laughs> and they and they have to record the whole thing too they have to shoot the whole experience by themselves they're given equipment and so they've got like a fucking gopro with a little stick and they're like oh i was trained in squirrel hunting but not fire putting out what do I do? And they're just, you know, like, dude, you came out to the Arctic tundra and you don't know how to put out a fire, dude. You know how to build one, but you don't know how to put it out. 
you know, that's fucking, that makes for great entertainment. Um, and, and what else, man? You know, you got, you got people that are, that are, that are fighting animals, like, for the meat that they've already hunted, right? Some dude hunts a fucking moose, and then he stores the meat on some, like, contraption that he builds that's way above the ground. And then some fucking wolverines come and, like, steal all of his fat. And the guy just fucking, he starts going, like, dude, fuck those wolverines. Next time I see a wolverine, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fuck it up. You know, and, like, I don't know, dude. I just, I've never seen a TV show like that. You know, you see, like, uh, Naked and Afraid or all that bullshit, dude. But they've got film crews with them. So it's, like. Are they really naked and afraid, dude? If they've got a film crew, these people have to film the whole thing themselves. Um, so it adds that extra layer. But um, yeah, man, alone. Check it out. There's seven seasons. I'm not even done with the first one that I started. And but there's something a lot more easy. A lot easier about, you know, instead of listening to fucking, I don't know, dude, N- NPR's interview with this All Lives Matter politician, fuck, whatever. Instead of doing that while you're having dinner, dude, and then having a debate about it with whoever you live with, let's fucking watch an episode of Alone, dude. Or two. You know, let's fucking watch people try to survive and fight for their life in the Arctic tundra. Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. There's something to that. Um, and then fucking... What else, man? What the fuck else? Let me see what I'm at on time, dude. 47 minutes. You know, it's nice when it just flies. It is nice when the time flies. Um, I did. So I, I talked about my fucking routine change. I talked about alone. I got a new segment that I am going to start doing on the show, on the podcast. And it's called questions i'm asking myself uh, because i'm i don't know i'm still figuring out what this podcast really is right a lot of it is just me trying to be humorous about bullshit about nothing a lot of it is me trying to be humorous about my pain <laughs> and my own shit um but then a lot of it is like still up in the air, you know, I've done 40 something episodes, I by no means, by no means know what this is, or what this could be, so I'm figuring it out, right, and one of the things that I want to try out is questions I'm asking myself, so as, as, as a potential segment that would actually bring you some sort of value, and not just fucking be me, um, trying to make you laugh, and I kind of answered this already, but two of the questions I've been asking myself are, one is the corollary to the other one, is what makes a day great, and what makes a day terrible, and what makes a day great, I'll start with what makes a day great, what makes a day great is when I do things that I enjoy doing, not things that I feel like I should be doing. And um, when I when I get enough sleep, that makes a day great. When I eat. Um, like when I eat food that I actually, that is actually good for me, or at least that isn't bad for me, 
and and you know it's that that, that can be very confused like not confusing but people can think that that's actually harder to do than it really is if you have money dude and you don't know how to eat properly dude order butcher box and fucking when you go to the grocery store buy almond milk cartons of eggs and vegetables fruits and vegetables so you got eggs meat um and on butcher box you can order fish poultry you know, all different kinds of it. And then you've also got fruits and vegetables and you got like some kind of uh, nut milk. Dude, if you just eat those five things, that's pretty much what I eat. And I, 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 when I went to Illinois, naturally it was a 16 hour drive. So we had to stop at fast food places because we didn't prepare our own food for the ride. And so I ate McDonald's, dude. We fucking went to Walmart when we got there to go to the grocery store. We got, like, bagels and just bread and cereal and sugar and more sugar and fucking syrup for our pancakes, dude. And all of this shit that made me feel terrible. So what makes a day great is what you eat, how much you sleep. And doing things that you enjoy. Now, for the doing things that you enjoy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be be very uh, not blunt, but very, very obvious as far as like, so like what I do this past week, what I've done uh, that made me feel great is, again, I wake up and I do three things before I check my phone. At least three things. You can do more than three. One of them can be physical, one of them can be connecting to yourself, um, and then another one could be drinking a glass of water. I do those three things, and then when I check my phone, dude, it doesn't feel like a bad thing. It feels like, all right, I've done some stuff. Now I can check my phone for five or ten minutes. After I check my, after I, uh, what, what I do, I don't, I, so I, the three things that I do is I meditate, I do more than three things. I meditate for 10 minutes and then I uh, write some stuff that I'm grateful for for five minutes. I shower and I ask myself the the five emotional connecting questions that I've uh, come to from uh, Philip McKernan, which are, you know, how am I truly feeling right now? Where in my body am I feeling that? Why I am really feeling this is because uh, how old are you and what are you trying to tell me, right? Interpret those however you want. But if you answer those five questions, that's what I'm doing. So that's four things. And then as soon as I'm done with those four things, I I write because that's something that I enjoy doing. Um, so I write for an hour or two. And then when I'm done doing that, I check my phone. And right after that, I eat breakfast, dude. So I've I've built up hunger. Because uh, sometimes when I eat right and when I wake up, I don't finish my food. So then I'm wasting food and then I feel bad about that. If I build up the hunger, finish it, and I enjoy it more because I'm craving it. Uh, and, and yeah, so then I check my phone. I feel I feel good. I, I eat some some delicious food and I watch... Uh, video while I do that which could be fucking an episode of Alone I try to save those non-work things for like the latter half of my day and so instead what I'll do is I'll watch one of Noah Kagan's videos or you know Tom Bilyeu uh, somebody dude that's also doing things that they enjoy not somebody that's complaining, not somebody that's fucking miserable, somebody that's doing things that they enjoy doing and sharing it, watch one of their videos. It could be somebody that's putting on makeup. It could be somebody reviewing makeup. It could be, you know, it could be a lot of different things. It doesn't matter what the thing is. It just matters that they're not bringing you down, dude. Um, and the reason that I do that while I'm eating is because then I can, you know, I'm still taking a break because I enjoy watching these things a lot. But I feel like I'm learning something and I also feel like I'm uh, 
learning something that I can then go and use when I'm done eating. So maybe it's something that's relevant to what you're going to work on that day. Um, and so for me, it was Noah Kagan and like how to build an email list. Okay, I'm going to fucking watch his 10 minute video while I eat my scrambled eggs on how to build an email list. And then when I'm done eating, I'm going to go do the things that he did for the next two or three hours. And all in all, when I'm done with that, if you think about it, I've only worked for five hours that day. And I've gotten a lot of things done. And by the time that it's four, depending on when you wake up, obviously, I wake up around nine or ten. Depending on when you wake up, you work five hours, it'll be four or five p.m. by the time you're done. And odds are you're working at home, so you don't need to worry about traffic. By the time it's four or five, dude, you can go outside for a walk. And and as soon as you're done working, that's the point. As soon as you're done working, you're done working. The only things that you can work on, that all the fucking dude, I, I'm not trying to lecture you. The only things I work on when I'm done working are like life or death things, which is nothing, right? Um, and so I make it a point, dude, that the latter half of my day is going to be just for me. So I'll go on a walk, I'll read, I'll go sit by the pool if I have one. Um, and swim and swim a little bit i will if if someone wants to hang out with me i'll hang out with them maybe do a zoom call with some friends watch a movie cook something listen to music draw fucking take your walk for, take your dog for a walk um you know there's there's a lot of things that's nine things that i thought of in 20 seconds but the point is that i play video games 10 things play board games 11 things um the point of these things is not to to just do something it's to recharge dude so if you don't feel like those things are recharging you which i've gotten to that point you know there's been times where i'll play video games for like four hours and after four hours that doesn't feel like it recharged me you know that feels like it drained me um and so you want to, I, I want to be careful with that too. Um, and so, yeah, those are the things that, that have made my days great. And I've, I've made it a point also because I know that there are ups and downs, right? So maybe two weeks from now, I might not be having as easy of a time keeping this routine. But if I, if I make it a point to focus also on how I'm feeling, then I can be a little bit more careful around that and so it's not it's not like i have to work i have to work i have to work and that makes me feel good because that's a that's a life lie dude if all you're doing to feel good is doing things and working that's not going to help um and so i also you know like i said last friday something that upset me it didn't matter that i was supposed to be working put everything aside and just feel that uncomfortable feeling because then you can let it go and then it's not going to bleed into your next week um and what makes a day terrible listening to the news um for more than 10 minutes right i know people think that if you don't listen to the news you're doing it wrong okay do you have to listen to it all day long though i don't think so listen to it for 10 minutes if there's really that much news in the world going on that you can't listen to in 10 minutes, does it all matter? Um, it's like, again, there's a lot of problems in the world. What are the ones that I care about and where can I learn from those as quickly as I can? Um, what makes a day terrible for me? Listening to the news or politics or Twitter, like, like reading comments spending a lot of time reading other people's comments on other people's videos and posts um not moving a lot like not moving my body very much um eating a lot of sugar or a lot of um just sugar i would say is mainly for me again if we're talking about me eating sugar and 
looking at social media for i mean that's again that's the same thing a lot of this is just like spending a lot of time on my phone makes a day terrible for me or 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 just consuming consuming more than i'm producing makes me feel like it was a terrible day um not leaving my apartment can sometimes make it feel like a terrible day and even if it's just a 10 minute walk that can shift my day from terrible to great uh spending time with at least one other person again just call somebody you can call anybody anybody can call one person a day for five minutes even if you're fucking herman hess you know even if you're fucking the guy that wrote steppenwolf you can call one person um and talk to them for five minutes and i don't know what else makes a day terrible you know what i'm what i'm telling myself about my day and myself makes a day terrible like if i'm telling myself that i'm that i'm guilty for not helping this cause or um you know if i'm if i have three things on my to-do list and i tell myself that if i don't do them i am a piece of shit that makes me that makes it a lot harder for me to do the things and it also makes it less enjoyable um but yeah so i don't know those are those are some of the questions that i've been asking myself because again the change i've noticed has been drastic and i want to make sure that i can um i don't know like I want other people to feel that way too, but I also want to make sure that I can continue to feel like I'm doing good things for myself. Uh, so yeah, that's questions I'm asking myself. And I, I brought that segment up. The reason I thought of it was like, all right, dude, maybe it's hard to have people ask questions when you don't have that big of an audience. And so maybe I can ask myself questions. Um, but yeah, I think that's the podcast, man. It's fucking what are we at? Yeah, we're at we're over an hour. So um thanks for listening to the pupils life. And and if you've been tuning in for a while, I really appreciate it. Um hopefully I I will I'm trying to shift into like bringing you more value. I know that a lot of people enjoy just like the shits and giggles. But often I find that that can just be distracting you um, from whatever it is you need to do. And sometimes that's good, right? Sometimes a distraction is good. But I also want to find shit that that is helpful. Um, I don't just want to talk about fucking Joe Biden being a pedophile and bullshit, you know. But um, so thanks for tuning in. I hope you will continue to tune in. And um, yeah, I'll talk to you next week.